ticket items will be costed, but uh, not some of the others. Let's Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. It's great to be here at the Fredericton Bowling Club alongside Matt DeCourcy. For the last four years, Matt has been doing a tremendous job representing his community in Ottawa. He has fought for the things that matter most to families. Things like better child support for seniors, uh, sorry, better support for seniors, the new Canada Child Benefit, and mitigating the impacts of floods in the region. I know that Matt is ready to continue this important work after October 21st and keep moving Fredericton forward. Also happy to be here with uh, our great, uh, some of our great members of the New Brunswick team uh, and uh, look forward to continuing to work with them as well, Jeanette, Karen, and Elena. My friends, in every election, we get to make an important choice about the kind of country we want to live in. We get to decide what kind of future we want to build together. In 2015, after a decade of failed conservative policy, Canada's economy was flat. Economic growth, job creation, wage growth, all were stalled thanks to a conservative government that believed cuts and austerity were the answers to everything. Les Canadiens ont donc choisi une nouvelle équipe qui était prête à investir dans les gens et dans leur communauté. Et bien qu'il nous reste encore énormément de travail à faire, on a passé les quatre dernières années à améliorer les choses et on a le bilan pour le prouver. Across the country, poverty is down and unemployment is low and job creation is way up. And it's because our team rejected conservative cuts and austerity and chose instead to invest in the middle class and people working hard to join it. We've put more money in people's pockets by cutting taxes for the middle class and raising them on the wealthiest 1%. We stopped sending child benefit checks to millionaires so we could send more to the single parent working two jobs, more to the family of five that falls a bit short at the end of the month. And we're conserving more of our nature and ensuring that our air stays clean and our water stays safe because we owe it to our kids and to ourselves to take care of our environment. Les investissements dont je vous parle font une vraie différence dans la vie des gens. Et cet automne, les Canadiens pourront voter pour le genre de pays dans lequel ils veulent vivre. Le 21 octobre, on aura tous un choix à faire. On peut continuer d'avancer ou on peut revenir aux, aux politiques des années Harper. That's the choice. It's that clear and it's that important. Conservatives like to say they're for the people, but then they cut taxes for the wealthy and cut services for everybody else, including for seniors. Our Liberal government chose to move Canada forward by investing in families, in seniors, and in our communities. By having faith in Canadians, and the results speak for themselves. In four short years, Canadians have created over a million jobs. We negotiated new health accords with the provinces and territories, including historic investments in mental health and in home care. The new Canada Child Benefit is helping parents with hundreds of dollars tax-free every month, and we've lifted 900,000 Canadians out of poverty, including 300,000 kids. We're off to a great start, but we know that here in New Brunswick and right across the country, there's more to do. We know more people need our help. Canadians are living longer than ever before, but as they age, costs go up. So a lot of people are struggling to keep up with the costs of prescription drugs, to make rent, and to buy their grandkids presents for Christmas. Our parents have worked so hard and sacrificed so much to give us a good life. Once they get to retirement, they shouldn't have to worry about their savings running out. One of the first things we did when we took office was to reverse the Harper government's decision to raise the age of eligibility for old age security and the guaranteed income supplement to 67 from 65. We boosted GIS by nearly $1,000 for low-income seniors who live alone, something the Conservative leader didn't support. On a aussi bonifié le régime de pension du Canada parce que dans un pays comme la, le nôtre, les aînés ne devraient pas avoir du mal à se rendre à la fin du mois. 
et on a augmenté le montant de l'exemption des gains du supplément de revenu garanti de façon à ce que les aînés à faible revenu qui veulent continuer de travailler puissent garder une plus grande part de leur chèque de paie. Today, we're continuing this important work of investing in and supporting our seniors by announcing that a re-elected Liberal government will increase old age security by an extra 10 percent once folks turn 75. These measures will increase benefits for most seniors by $729 next year. And that number will continue to rise each year with inflation. And that's on top of the money seniors have already received from the positive changes we've made to OAS and GIS. By expanding benefits for older Canadians during our first mandate, we helped lift 50,000 seniors out of poverty. With these new measures, we will help 20,000 more seniors, two-thirds of whom are women. These changes will help many people here in New Brunswick, but today we're taking things even further. A new Liberal government will also work with provinces and territories to boost the Canada Pension Plan and the Quebec Pension Plan's survivor benefits by 25 percent. For a surviving spouse, this would mean an increase in maximum benefits of more than $2,000 per year. Losing your partner is one of the hardest things people will have to go through in their lives. With this new measure, our government is giving those who've lost a loved one some much-needed breathing room as they grieve and adjust to a new life. My friends, seniors have built the Canada that we know and love today and they deserve to enjoy their golden years to the fullest. While the Conservative leader wants to go back to the policies of the Harper years, policies that hurt seniors, our new Liberal government will continue to step up for those who need it and deserve it most. Because at the end of the day, politics is about people. It's about you. And whether you're 7 or 77, you deserve a real plan for the future. My friends, we've done a lot over the past four years together, but the truth is, we're just getting started. On October 21st, we all have an important choice to make. Will we go back to the failed policies of the past, or will we continue to move forward? I'm for moving forward for everyone. Merci d'être ici ce matin, tout le monde. Hi, Mr. Trudeau. Uh, David Cochran from CBC News. Uh, the latest numbers from the Finance Department have the deficit for the last fiscal year at about $14 billion. You've made about $4 billion in new spending promises during this campaign, but we haven't seen a costing on how you're going to pay for it or how it will impact the deficit. So will you give us a deficit reduction plan in your platform, or should Canadians expect that as long as you're in the Prime Minister's office, the country is going to be in deficit? Canadians expect their governments to be fiscally responsible, and that is something that is the heart of everything the Liberal government has done and will continue to do. But we made a very different choice than the Conservatives did in 2015. Instead of continuing to propose cuts and austerity as the Conservatives had done for 10 years under Stephen Harper, we made a decision to invest, to invest in our seniors, to invest in our kids, to invest in communities. And that has worked. Over the past four years, we've seen unemployment at record lows. We've seen job creation at record highs. Uh, we've seen hundreds of thousands of people lifted out of poverty because we have a plan that understands that confident, a confident country can and should be investing in itself and in its future. But the fiscal responsibility element is really important. We know that every single year under our plan, and this will continue, our debt as a proportion of our country's GDP will continue to decrease. It's one of the lowest in the, in the world, and it's continuing to get lower. That's the fiscally responsible plan that we've always put forward. But, of course, a lot of politicians talk about you know, their plan and their responsibility and, and other people's responsibility. People are a little bit skeptical of politicians. I get that, which is why people should look at the official and the credible 
bond rating agencies that actually look at fiscal plans of country around, countries around the world and assess them. There are only 11 countries in the world with AAA bond ratings. Canada is one of them. Moody's, S&P, others have looked at Canada's fiscal plan and said that is a sustainable plan for the future, one that Canadians can be confident in. So we are going to continue to invest in Canadians, to support our seniors, and to grow our economy and keep things better for the future. Andrew Scheer, just like Stephen Harper, is proposing cuts. We are proposing to invest in tomorrow. Okay. Uh, nous savons que les gens euh, veulent avoir un plan qui investit dans nos communautés, investit dans les, les personnes, les familles, euh, tout en restant responsable. C'est pour ça que nous avons un plan qui continue de diminuer notre dette comme proportion de notre PIB et qu'on garde encore euh, les, les meilleures cotes euh, des, euh, des agences internationales euh, dans le monde. Nous avons un plan qui est durable et qui est un grand contraste avec l'approche de Stephen Harper, de Andrew Scheer, des conservateurs, qui proposent toujours l'austérité et les coupes. On ne peut pas créer de la croissance économique en coupant dans les services pour les gens. Les conservateurs ne comprennent pas ça. Et nous, on a démontré au cours des quatre dernières années que justement en investissant dans les gens, dans les familles, dans la classe moyenne, dans nos communautés, on a créé de la croissance, on a créé des emplois et on a sorti bien des gens de la pauvreté. Mr. Trudeau, just to follow up on, on the specific Canada pension plan boost that you're proposing here today, uh, you boost benefits, you have to pay for it somehow. So are you telling Canadians to pay for this promise? Their premiums are going to have to increase over what they are now. Uh, there are two announcements today we're making. Uh, one is that we are increasing uh, OAS by 10%. Uh, for seniors uh, over 75 years old, because we recognize that as people age, uh, sometimes uh, their costs go up as well. That's why we are going to be there to support seniors. And I will remind you uh, that Stephen Harper's government cut benefits for seniors by raising the retirement age from 65 to 67. And he didn't campaign on that. He didn't promise he was going to do that. He just went ahead and did it. And the Conservatives will do that again. They're trying to pretend that you can get all of Stephen Harper's credits without getting any of his cuts. That's just not credible. In regards to uh, the Canada Pension Plan, we will work with the provinces and territories uh, to ensure that we're able to increase survivors' benefits uh, for a widow or a widower uh, from 60% to 75%. We know. Losing a loved one is one of the hardest things someone's going to go through, losing their partner, uh, and we need to give them more support to be able to uh, live out uh, the rest of their life uh, in, 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 uh, in uh, safety and security. Uh, and that is something we are going to work with the provinces and territories on. As we know, changes to the CPP require us to work with the provinces and territories. We demonstrated that we could do that when we strengthened the CPP uh, in, the, in the spring of 2016, uh, even though the Conservatives were opposed to it and have committed to reversing those changes we made to the CPP. So will premiums go up, sir, yes or no? That's a conversation we're going to be having with the provinces. Hi, Mr. Trudeau. Uh, Tom Perry with CBC News. Andrew Shear says you're going to have to raise taxes uh, to pay for your deficits, to pay for all this uh, new spending. What's your response? Will you have to raise people's taxes for all these promises you're making? We are the party that has lowered taxes for Canadians. We lowered taxes for the middle class as the first thing we did by raising them on the wealthiest 1%. We've consistently invested in the middle class, things like the Canada Child Benefit, things like the increase of the guaranteed income supplement, because we know that when you put more money in Canadians' pockets, they do better and the economy does better. That's the fundamental contrast with the vision that the Conservatives put forward that continue to think you can cut your way to growth, that austerity is a way of creating opportunity and growth. It failed. It failed for 10 years under Stephen Harper, and Andrew Scheer has exactly the same plan. In 2015 and in 2019, we have a different approach. We know that investing in Canadians and in their communities is the way to grow the economy. 
we are going to be lowering taxes for Canadians and increasing opportunities and benefits for them like we are today, because that is the way to create a prosperous society. The Conservatives don't understand that. We've not seen uh, an independent costing of any of your promises from the Parliamentary Budget Officer, and I'm wondering if today you would commit to allowing uh, the Parliamentary Budget Officer to independently cost out all of your individual promises. One of the commitments we made uh, in the last election was to empower the Parliamentary Budget Officer to be able to actually cost the different uh, political parties' election platforms. And I can assure you uh, that we have been and are working with the Parliamentary Budget Officer on uh, costing elements for our platform. Uh, we will be releasing a fully costed, fully responsible platform uh, in the coming weeks, including all the work done by the Parliamentary Budget Officer on specific measures. Okay. Uh, nous, avons fait, nous avons promis uh, de donner la capacité au directeur parlementaire du budget de faire une évaluation des différentes plateformes et promesses électorales faites par les partis politiques pour que les Canadiens puissent avoir une meilleure idée des coûts des promesses des différents partis. Euh, on a et on est en train de travailler avec le, le directeur parlementaire du budget sur notre plateforme, sur nos annonces, et euh, je vous promets que nous allons euh, partager euh, tous les coûts de notre plateforme, y compris le travail fait par le directeur du parlementaire du budget, euh, en bonne et due forme, dans les semaines à venir. C'est important que les Canadiens puissent savoir exactement c'est quoi les plans et c'est quoi le niveau de responsabilité de tous les partis, et je suis très fier du travail que nous sommes en train de faire avec le directeur parlementaire du budget. Bonjour, M. Trudeau, Philippe Vincent Foisy de Radio-Canada. Euh, le premier ministre Legault a fait sa liste d'épicerie hier en demandant plus de pouvoir en immigration, d'étendre la loi 101 aux entreprises fédérales, rapport d'impôt unique et le fait que vous ne touchiez pas à la loi 21 sur la laïcité. Vous avez dit non à tout ça. Comment pensez-vous être capable de réconcilier le fait que c'est un gouvernement qui parle pour les Québécois, qui est très populaire en ce moment, et le fait que vous disiez non à tout ce qu'il demande? Euh, ça fait quatre ans que je travaille avec euh, le gouvernement euh, du Québec euh, sur bien des enjeux et on a démontré qu'on est en train euh, de, de bénéficier aux Québécois et à tous les Canadiens avec une approche euh, qui est euh, collaborative avec les provinces. Euh, nous prenons toujours très au sérieux les demandes euh, de tout premier ministre provincial, y compris de M. Legault. Et on va travailler avec lui euh, pour euh, trouver des façons euh, d'aider les Québécois, d'aider les Canadiens euh, de façon responsable. Vous n'avez pas peur de rentrer encore une fois en confrontation avec une autre province? Vous parlez de collaboration, c'est beau, là, mais dans la réalité, vous êtes en confrontation avec plusieurs provinces. Si vous reprenez le pouvoir, vous ne pensez pas être en confrontation avec une autre d'entre elles? Euh, les Canadiens savent très bien, les Québécois euh, inclus, euh, que je vais toujours défendre l'intérêt euh, des citoyens. Je vais toujours être là pour investir, pour protéger, euh, pour assurer un meilleur avenir. Et je vais toujours travailler avec euh, toutes les provinces pour essayer d'arriver à la bonne réponse. J'ai une approche profondément collaborative. Oui, c'est vrai qu'il y a certaines provinces qui, par exemple, refusent d'agir sur euh, la protection de l'environnement. Euh, bien des premiers ministres conservateurs, euh, y compris celui ici au Nouveau-Brunswick, euh, pensent que ce serait une bonne chose de rendre euh, la pollution gratuite, encore une fois. Je refuse. Nous allons toujours démontrer que de protéger l'environnement et de créer de la croissance économique, ça doit aller ensemble. Et donc, nous allons continuer de trouver des façons euh, d'aider et de bénéficier aux citoyens, euh, idéalement avec les premiers ministres. Mais nous, notre engagement est toujours de chercher à travailler de façon colla collaborative, mais euh, de bénéficier aux citoyens. Okay. Um, we have uh, been a government that has demonstrated over the past four years that we prefer uh, to work with uh, provinces. And uh, we will, of course, uh, look carefully at how we can work with the Quebec government to benefit citizens, just like we work with governments right across the country to, uh, to help out their citizens. Uh, yes, there are governments who disagree with us on certain things, and it obviously uh, comes to mind the, the fact that there's a number of Conservative premiers that don't think we should be fighting climate change, that think we should make pollution free again. 
Well, I'm sorry, I think Canadians, including in those provinces across the country, understand that the only way to build a stronger future for our economy is also to make sure we're protecting the environment. And that's what we've done consistently. So we will try to work with the premiers wherever we can, but we will continue to stand up strongly for what is right and what Canadians need every step of the way. And we will always uh, work to do that in a respectful and collaborative way whenever possible. Glenn McGregor, CTV News. Uh, Mr. Trudeau, as we move closer to Election Day, can you tell me what the Liberal Party is doing to prepare for the possibility of foreign cyber interference in the electoral process and also fake online news? Uh, we uh, demonstrated uh, leadership on this uh, over the past year uh, as our Minister of Democratic Institutions, Karina Gould, uh, moved forward on uh, measures and legislation that protects Canadians uh, from and our electoral systems and our democracies from foreign interference. Uh, we obviously know we have to continue to remain vigilant. Uh, we have uh, intelligence agencies and uh, security uh, agencies who are ensuring that we are uh, continuing to have free and fair elections. Uh, we have created uh, bodies that are there independently to oversee if there is uh, interference in our, in our electoral process. Uh, at the same time, however, uh, citizens uh, need to be very alert and aware uh, of uh, the propagation of misinformation and falsehoods on the internet. I think uh, we've demonstrated as a party that we take that responsibly very, responsibility very seriously. Unfortunately, we're seeing from Andrew Scheer and the Conservatives the kinds of uh, behavior and the kinds of misrepresentation of the truth that uh, really resembles what we see south of the border. Uh, I don't think that's something that Canadians want. I think that's something that we're all going to have to stand strongly against and ensure that the debates and disagreements we have in this election between parties that uh, are important for Canadians to understand the issues and see the different perspectives happen in a way that is based on facts and reality to allow for a strong, robust, uh, but truth-based contrast of ideas and plans for the future. Nous trouvons que euh, c'est dommage que le Parti euh, conservateur sous Andrew Scheer euh, se comporte un petit peu de la façon qu'on a vu euh, au sud de la frontière euh, quand on euh, parle de vérité et de, euh, de, de détournement de la vérité. C'est important dans une élection qu'on se base sur les faits, qu'on crée de vrais contrastes entre les différentes perspectives pour que les Canadiens puissent faire des choix informés. C'est important de ne pas induire les Canadiens en erreur de façon délibérée. Good morning, Mr. Trudeau. Theresa Wright from the Canadian Press. Um, I'd, I'd like to ask you about the First Nation of Nescantaga, where uh, a number of um, there have been forced ev evacuations because of a lack of water. People are getting sick from the water. Can you uh, please talk about what you're prepared to do about the water crisis in that community? Uh, we are very concerned about uh, the situation in, uh, in the community. Uh, I can assure you that our Minister of Indigenous Services, Seamus O'Regan, has been in contact uh, with the leadership of that community, uh, people from uh, the Department of Indigenous Services uh, are engaged to uh, provide the supports necessary. We're going to continue to work with the communities, the community, uh, to keep people safe and take the measures and the steps necessary uh, to ensure that people are kept safe. We know. Uh, that ensuring uh, drinking water in uh, Indigenous communities is a priority that Canadians called for in the 2015 election. And we set out an ambitious plan to lift all boil water advisories in Indigenous communities right across the country within five years. And I can report we have lifted 87 long-term boil water advisories and are on track to eliminate all those remaining on schedule. That is something that matters. That is something that matters to Canadians and obviously to Indigenous peoples as well. But there's always more to do. And that's why we're working with this community that is facing a very difficult situation right now. This community has been without safe drinking water for 25 years. Uh, a little over a week ago, you sent the military to help this part of the country uh, in the wake of uh, Hurricane Dorian. Uh, why not more urgency when dealing with water issues for Indigenous communities? Uh, we take extremely seriously the responsibility to move forward with urgency on uh, fixing the drinking water situation in communities right across the country. Uh, that's why we've been able to lift 87 long-term boil water advisories when, as you pointed out, for decades very little was done. We know 
that there is more to do and that is why we are working with this community and we are looking at all different options in terms of how we're going to create stable, long-term drinking, uh, drinking water supplies for these communities that have uh, in many cases suffered for tar far too long. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good morning, David Aiken from Global News. I'd say you've deeply disappointed many progressive voters. Your, your, your broken promise on electoral reform, a bald-faced broken promise on electoral reform is the biggest one. And a lot of those disillusioned progressive values voters are thinking this time about voting for the Green Party, and many in this riding and another riding. So I want, I, I'd invite you to address that voter who has voted Liberal in 2015, but now is seriously looking at a green option. What can you say to them to rebuild that trust, get them excited again about politics because they're disappointed? Actually, throughout this campaign, we've been talking uh, not just to specific groups of Canadians, but to all Canadians, demonstrating that we understand uh, that as much as we have done over the past four years on being one of the governments, uh, the, the government that has done more for protecting the environment than any government in history, done more on Indigenous uh, reconciliation services than any government in history, that there is always lots more to do. We, are, we have brought in uh, a, fe a feminist international de uh, development policy that has made a huge impact on uh, communities around the world by empowering and educating women in some of the most vulnerable communities. We have done many of the things uh, that Canadians asked us to do over the past four years. But at the same time, we recognize there is lots more to do. And that gets down to the choice that Canadians are facing right now. Do we continue to do the hard work that we've been doing over these past four years, moving forward on protecting the environment while protecting Canadians' economic well-being as we move towards the future? Do we continue to prepare for a world that is changing rapidly and empower citizens, young people, uh, workers with training and education to be able to continue to thrive in a transforming world? Do we continue to play a strong role on the international stage, standing up for our values and creating opportunities for people around the world? Are we going to continue to stay true to our values and do the hard work we've been doing for the past four years? Or do we go back to the Harper years? That is the choice Canadians are facing right now. This is a really important election. And I look forward to continuing to talk with Canadians about the positive choice to move forward that we're putting forward to them. Let me just put a little finer point because a lot of Canadians have had to make choices in the last four years. And in PEI, the Green Party is official opposition and the Liberals are in third place. In this province, there's three Green MLAs and these voters here rejected a Liberal government very closely aligned to yours. There's a first Green Party MPP in Ontario. The Greens hold the balance of power in BC. How do you account for all these people choosing Green? How do you figure that out? This is all while you've been Prime Minister. I think at the same time as we look at what's happening across the country, we have to recognize that even though the vast majority of Canadians are really concerned about the environment and about fighting climate change in provincial governments right across the country, there have been Conservative premiers elected who don't believe in fighting climate change, who don't believe that protecting the environment needs to be a priority. And unfortunately, that's something New Brunswickers are struggling with right now. People who are choosing, premiers who are choosing to use millions of dollars of your money to fight a concrete plan to fight climate change in the courts, instead of figuring out how to work with us to build a better future in which we can have a stronger environment and make life more affordable for all Canadians. The fact is, the price on pollution that we're bringing in right across the country, in those provinces where Conservative premiers, supported by Andrew Scheer, want to make pollution free again, we are putting more money in the pockets of most New Brunswickers with putting a price on pollution than they would have if we didn't put that price on pollution. We are fighting climate change and making it affordable for Canadians. So the fact that people are making different choices at the provincial level is interesting to political scientists and to uh, pundits, 
But I'm listening to Canadians, and Canadians tell me we need to have a strong plan for the future. We need to be able to fight climate change and grow the economy at the same time. And we have done more on both of those fronts over the past four years than any government in Canadian history. But we are the first to recognize there's lots more to do. And that's the choice Canadians are facing right now. Do we continue with the positive choice we made in 2015? Or do we go back to the Harper years with Andrew Scheer? Why are you supporting a pipeline in the West and not Energy East? Uh, the Energy East uh, project was withdrawn by the proponent for market reasons, for price reasons, for reasons of supply and demand. Uh, if there is no project for the federal government to evaluate, then there is no project for the federal government to evaluate. Uh, projects that come forward, we will evaluate on their merit through a rigorous process that the Conservatives didn't believe in. We know the only way to build infrastructure projects, particularly energy infrastructure projects, is to demonstrate responsibility towards the environment, partnership with Indigenous peoples, and to work collaboratively with communities and governments right across the country. And as projects come forward, we will uh, submit them through a rigorous process. But if the proponent withdraws a project, we can't make a determination on that project. Okay. Uh, nous savons uh, que, uh, contrairement aux conservateurs, la seule façon d'avoir de l'approbation pour uh, des projets énergétiques, uh, c'est d'assurer la protection de l'environnement, le travail avec les communautés autochtones uh, et le partenariat et la consultation uh, avec les gens à travers le pays. Uh, C'est l'approche que nous uh, préconisons. Pour le, pro le projet d'Énergie Est, uh, la compagnie a retiré leur projet pour des raisons de marché, pour des raisons de, de prix, pour des raisons de la situation, du contexte économique global. Uh, et donc, uh, nous n'avons pas à nous prononcer sur ce projet-là. Mais nous allons toujours s'assurer que quelque projet que ce soit passe par des, uh, des étapes rigoureuses dans l'évaluation pour démontrer qu'on respecte les préoccupations des Canadiens. C'est la seule façon de créer un avenir plus fort en protégeant l'environnement en même temps. Merci beaucoup tout le monde.